cast a mile out here. So guys, I'm out here. My first time ever ice fishing. And uh ain't going so well. I really don't see why people like it that much. I mean, I can skip like pretty much across the whole lake. I ain't get many bites. I love ice fishing, you know. So fishing that real slow retrieve, that six six, six stick, my favorite, man, that really loads up. Why do why do people like ice fishing so much? I just don't get it. I haven't caught a single one. Well, considering it's too cold to go out and use this thing, because there's ice on the freaking lakes, figured we might as well do one of these old tackle warehouse unboxings. To be honest, they're not my favorite videos. I'm, honestly, I enjoy a lot of other videos a lot more than that. Fishing with this thing, um, just any, anything else pretty much. But, they get views. And what's YouTube without trying to get views? But anyway, at the same time, tackle prep during this winter season is huge for a lot of us, especially those who live north of, uh, I don't know, Mason-Dixon line. For me, that means a lot of restocking and getting ready for the next year for tournament fishing, because that's what I love to do now, is tournament fish. Like, I've been fishing the BFLs and uh, some of the Opens as a co-angler. I got a couple videos coming out hopefully soon, so be sure to subscribe to see those actually tournament videos as a co-angler. So, but by the end of a year, your stock gets depleted, you lose your lures, you find out new things, and so, basically this is my massive tackle warehouse unboxing. It's basically me restocking for the next year. I'm trying to get as much, usually I do it now because of the sales, you know, you get 25% off, pretty much like, or what is it, 15, 25, something. It's a substantial sale, and when you're buying that much, you end up saving a couple hundred dollars. And so that's really, really nice. So it's good to just, for me, it's good to get a lot of things out of the way now. So I'm using some of my winnings from last year. Didn't win tons of money, but I want enough to basically pay for it back. And so that's, that's kind of how fishing is. You just, you know, until you get to the point, you know, the top tours where you can actually make good money, if you're good, most people can't do it. But at those lower levels, you either have to be winning, pretty much you're not gonna make much of a profit. And if you do, it's just going straight back in to paying for your next year. So that's what this is. We're going to get into it right now. Stay tuned. Enjoy. And uh, let's just see what kind of goodies we got in this big old honking box. I feel like I need to pick a way to do this. What are we... All right. First off, swim baits. I got grabbed a couple of these Zoom swimmers. I got pack of the shad color, the blueback herring color, and another one in hitch color. And I've had some decent success on these. Everyone knows hollow belly swim baits are a big deal. Um, these are zooms. I've had them work good. I've caught some decent fish on them. I really want to get into it even more. I want to experiment with it. This is the kind of fishing that can produce big fish and really win tournaments. So I really would love to keep trying these. So went ahead and picked some up, some zoom swimmers. Next. Some, some of the ugly, dirty work kind of baits. These are just chunks. Um, I got several different kinds of chunks. We got some big salty chunks by Zoom, um, some little super, super chunks, which are smaller. We got some of the pack, of, the pack of chunks, which are basically the pack of craws, just the claws, and all green pumpkin variations, some with flakes, some without. And these are gonna go on the back of your jigs when you're flipping. Chunks really are a, are a style of trailer that are used a lot by the pros. If you watch Bassmaster Live, FLW Live, you watch those feeds, watch what's, look at the shape of their jig, and you'll notice when you pause that frame, more than likely you're gonna see a chunk, especially one of these like big salty chunks in the back. They're good in cold water, they work in warm water, they catch big fish, yada, yada, yada. They don't look like much, they just look like a piece of plastic with that's been basically hunked into a square with the two little prongs. It's not much to it, but, Bass love it, and a lot of times simpler is better, and so that's why you go with that. Next up, we've got some finesse worms. Got several different kinds here. Got a pack of robo worms, morning dawn. If you guys have never tried a robo worm, it's basically like one of the all-time fish catchers. This is just morning dawn color, and the thing is, I only bought one pack. 
problem with robo worms is that they fade, especially in the sunlight. Robo worms just, for some unknown reason, they just fade and their colors go terrible. These almost already look like their colors have started to fade a tiny bit in the month that I bought them. So a lot of times for me, when it comes to robo worms, this is the one bait, it's annoying because I use them so much, but I can't order them in advance. But I also am trying a couple more JDM finesse worms. These are some dial worms, and these are the Nico straight worms. These are the six and a half inch. I got some green pumpkin and some green pumpkin watermelon. Um, it's just a different variation of a straight tail worm. I love a straight tail worm. I love to throw these. I'd love to get into throwing the Nico rig. It's one of those things that catches a lot of fish, and I need to get on it. So these ones, they Gary, they're Gary Yamamoto actually makes the plastic. And they look like really decent little finesse worms. Thin body. They just look like real good fish catchers. And then the last one is um, the Nico Fat. It basically looks like a Cinco, but with a bulbous, like, trip worm style end. So these look good. The green pumpkin, again, just a different form. Throwing that Nico worm. You could use them a lot of ways, too. Alright. Speaking of straight tail worms, we got trip worms. And if you guys have watched some of my videos, you probably noticed a lot of these. Yeah, well, basically, I, 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 they're one of the all-time bass catchers. A straight tail worm is just so simple and so basic, and it just, I mean, I've caught them on it, you know, clear water, dirty water, tidal rivers, you know, probably could catch them in the ocean off an offshore rig. You, you can fish them in two inches or 200 feet deep, and you probably still catch them. If they're there, it'll, basically, they just catch bass. I mean, I'm, I'm not a pro, but watermelon... Green pumpkin, they'll get you through pretty much everything. So if you're looking for baits to try, definitely try those. I mean, I'm not paid by them, they just, they just work, okay? What was, okay. Well, we got some beaver style baits. Um, these happen to be the missile baits D-bomb. It's a, beaver baits are a flipping and pitching bait. They're a, a lot more subtle of a bait. Uh, beaver baits generally, the appendages are not they don't, they're not swimming appendages. They're more of, they just kind of wave and there's no, like like a dance move, kind of like that, you know? Um, these Missile Baits D-Bombs, I've had success with them. Again, two colors gonna be green pumpkin variations and black and blue. And then I got a different version of a Sweet Beaver. This is the Net Bait B-Bug, this is in black and blue. I got some more coming in green pumpkin, of course, but they were actually out, so they, they clearly work. And then, the age-old classic Biffle Bug, and uh, just as classic, Green Pumpkin Candy. Um, Tom Biffle's caught 10,000 bass on these and made probably $10 million, or probably caught more than 10,000 bass, actually. Anyway, I've never actually tried them, so we'll give them a go. Next up, we got another bait. This is just, again, another bait that just, just catches them, and, and that's the, the Rage Bug. These things, just from the instant they hit the shelves, have been just catching fish like crazy, especially for me. It's my, one of my biggest confidence baits when I'm flipping and pitching. And again, it's one of those baits that if you're looking for baits to buy, you're like you know, me when I started out. You can only buy, you can't go buy 15 types of beavers and you can't buy 20 different colors. You gotta pick one. And so, wanna, if, you, if you're just looking for one that will catch your fish just and be a confidence, bait for you definitely try it one of these rage bugs and green pumpkin um again i got some more green pumpkin and some black and blue pretty much all you need i'll bear i'll mix it up a little bit i was out of these so figured i'd add a few more all right we're getting into the non-plastics here um starting off i got some football jigs these are some heavy these are three quarter ounce um green pumpkin and peanut butter and jelly these are natural colors crawfish colors those heavy weights, three quarter of an ounce, you're gonna fish that pretty deep, you know, 12 to maybe 25 feet, depending on how slow you fish that bait. I've got to pick these up for fish in winter time, you know, road beds, deep rocky points, something I don't have many of, so I needed to have some in case a situation arises where I need to throw one. We got some skipping jigs by uh, Striking. I'm throwing jigs a little bit more lately, reason being, they just catch a lot of fish, and they seem to catch some big fish. I haven't thrown them enough, and they win a lot of tournaments, so I feel like I need to put them in my boat more so I can be more confident with them so I can throw them in the tournament. Um, so these are some skipping jigs. I have a lot of dioxin on my home lake, and so just went with two colors, uh, green pumpkin and uh, blue craw, both green pumpkin variations, really. 
um, and they're both half ounce. And then last off, we got some uh, smaller jigs and finesse jigs. I got a couple of these chompers finesse jigs. I've thrown these before. This is green pumpkin purple. As you can see, there's going to be a lot of that. I've seen these and I've never, I've always wanted some, so I went ahead and just picked some up. It's, it's the uh, mini flip jig, so it's again, it's a jig, but it's a real small profile, which for me, getting into jig fishing a little bit more is pretty good. Something smaller, it just appeals to more fish. I love getting bites, and it's why a lot of times in the winter, I love to go fish for crappie, striper, what's biting. Um, so a smaller jig like this, just something that'll get a little, maybe a few more bites, and hopefully still get a few of those big bites. And I've, um, so these are green pumpkin, three eighths, um, three eighths ounce, half ounce. Um, well, while we're going JDM, we might as well go with one of the biggest JDM like lines of baits you can go with. And that's jerk baits. So jerk baits are confidence bait of mine. I catch a lot of fish on them, a lot of good fish. But they're an expensive bait, so it, it stinks. Because most of the, a lot of the better quality jerk baits are in fact made in Japan. They're highly, they're high, well crafted baits, and the one of the most famous ones is the Vision 110. It's the one of the, by Mega Bass. It's one of the most famous jerk baits out there, and it just still catches them. And it's the bait I have the most confidence in. But it's an arm and a leg, and it, it's like painful to buy it. But then when it comes, it looks so stinking cool. You're like, ah, why? Why does that have to be this way? But anyway, this is uh, GP Crystal Shad. Looks really good. I love those translucent colors. Me personally, I fish a lot of clear water. And then I got two one Vision 110 plus ones. These are deeper diving baits. Um, although this one isn't, I forgot. But this one is, and this is Sexy Shad. And then we got ITO, which is a famous color. It looks all right. We'll see how a little bit, little bit dirtier water. I'm thinking, or just it's just a more solid body. And then another JDM jerk bait that I've tried a little bit, and I'm excited to try some more of my own is a Duo Realis. This is a their jerk bait. It's just a jerk bait, <laughs> Duo Realis jerk bait, um, 120. It's a big bait. This one is um, in morning dawn color. It's a great, really large jerk bait, and I've caught some good fish on Duo Realis jerk baits. So in this color, so this is a really big one. Looking for a big bite, but. Jerk baits are just a great, great bait. Clear water, cold water, suspended bass, and that's what I get a lot of in my home. So I fish these a lot. We got crank baits. These are just some striking ones, some deeper diving ones. Most of these are five XDs. Uh, I got some sexy blue back herring, some pearl blue chartreuse, and then green gizzard shad. It's a variety. You got some solid colors, some more natural colors, just depending on the water clarity crankbaits, I don't have a lot, and I don't have a ton of confidence, so I figured I'd just at least grab a few to keep trying, keep using them in some of my other little local lakes that aren't as clear, and see if I can get confidence in these things and start figuring these baits out. I need to try more. The 5XD is a good mid-range size for fishing, you know, 8 to maybe 15, ah, that's a little deep, but um, 8 to 12 feet, really, and uh, so I had to pick some of those up. Speaking of cold water, got some famous cold water crankbaits here. These are the Wiggle Wards. I, I used to have a bunch, I lost a bunch of them, but so I went ahead and picked up a few new ones. I got some interesting colors here. Uh, Wiggle Warts are great cold water baits and they're good in the Ozarks. They're famous there. The lakes here are set up very similarly and you can catch a lot of fish on a Wiggle Wart. So I went ahead and grabbed a few. Last but not least of the baits in this order, were some six cents baits. I've tried some in the past, and so I figured I'd go ahead and order some. I got two styles of shallow running crankbaits here. This is the Movement L7. Um, heard some good things from Tyler's Real Fishing on these baits, so shout out to you, Tyler. Um, so I figured I'd try them. They're kind of a really big square bill. I think a bit more of a shallow, like almost like a wake bait, but a little bit deeper diving. Just an interesting action. I got two shag colors. One, one's a little bit more translucent than the other. Um, just for different water, water clarities and just whatever I'm fishing. So those should be interesting. And then these are baits that I have confidence in because I've caught some fish on them. This is the Sixth Sense Crush Flat 75. And uh, these catch, I've caught some, caught fish on these and they feel really good on your line. They just, they just have a really good thumb to them. Flat side, you can throw in cold water, but it seems to just catch them, period. So. Threadfin shad and baby shad, pretty much with crankbaits a lot of times. It's just shad patterns. These I'm gonna, I've got some other colors of these already, so 
Uh, but these were the ones I picked up in this, and hopefully they'll serve me well. So, all right, guys, that's a wrap on the unboxing video. As always, it was a lot of stuff, and it's easy to just look over it all and just not think about it. But you know, it really is. You know, you got to think about these are the tools of the trade. You know, fishing. It's one of those cool things. It's why fishing is so cool is because the things that look like toys and we treat like toys are also the tools that, you know, can bring a living and also to compete. And and that's why, you know, it's easy to look at all this stuff as just a bunch of, you know, junk that you're buying, just wasting your money on. But at the same time, what's neat about fishing is it's like it's going somewhere. Every lure you buy, it's not just something that, that's being thrown away. It's something that's leading you somewhere. It's a tool to be used in in your pursuit of your passion. If anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I gotta get back inside. It's absolutely freezing. And complain about the fact that I can't fish even if I wanted to. Well, what am I saying? Of course I want to. Even if I was able. When I, when I am. Okay, where are we going with this? Anyway, guys, thanks. If drop a like on the video if you liked it. If you didn't, okay. But you made it this far. Gold star of approvement. Thanks for watching, guys. Tight lines. God bless. We'll see you in the next time. In the next time, the next video, which is in time somewhere, space time.